introduction to apache flink so guys let's start our discussion with the agenda we'll start with the introduction to apache flink then guys we'll talk about its history we'll discuss its ecosystem in great details then guys we'll see its architecture basic architecture only today we'll see then guys uh, the transformations execution model end to end complete execution flow we'll discuss in great details then guys we'll discuss several features of apache flink so guys in one liner if i define what exactly is apache flink it is the next generation big data tool also known as 4g of big data so guys apache flink is the powerful open source engine which provides batch processing interactive processing real time stream processing graph processing iterative processing in memory processing guys it can handle all these types of requirements so guys i have collected what all are the different requirements in the industry and flink actually can address all of them earlier guys what we need to do we needed to use multiple frameworks like for batch use map reduce for streaming use storm for graph use giraffe but guys that was very complex here in the flink just single unified platform to address all the types of requirements that too with lightning fast speed ease of use and sophisticated analytics let's talk about flink in little more details guys flink is a true streaming engine it doesn't actually cut the stream into micro batches like spark it process the data as soon as it arrives guys flink core is a streaming data flow engine that provides data distribution communication and fault tolerance for distributed computation at the core at the heart it is a streaming engine in upcoming slide we'll discuss this in more details so guys flink is a general purpose framework which targets to unify different data loads no need of different specialized engine use a single unified platform called apache flink for all your requirements process events at a consistently high rate with low latency guys you can process the uh, data at low latency as low as millisecond that to a single digit single digit in milliseconds all right let's proceed ahead guys flink is the open source platform for distributed stream as well as batch processing overall broad categories are stream and batch processing guys it is a large scale data processing engine flink handles huge volumes very high velocity and varieties of data quite efficiently it is a real time engine guys as discuss it doesn't cut stream into micro batches its streaming data flow run time actually interprets every program as a data flow graph what exactly a data flow graph is and how it looks like in upcoming slide again we discuss it guys there is a native support this is a little important there is a native support for diverse use cases on the top of streaming engine so if we talk about the history of apache flink guys the development of flink started in technical university in berlin in 2009 under the project stratosphere earlier name was not flink later it was incubated into apache in april 2014 guys flink became top level project in december 2014 uh, about its name flink is a german word which means swift or agile and regarding its square logo guys actually 
it is having like uh, in the harmony of uh, Hadoop ecosystem where we are having several animals. So that's why uh, Squirrel logo is used for the flink. All right, let's proceed ahead. Now, Apache flink ecosystem. Guys, if I explain ecosystem in different layers, at the core, at the heart, guys we have runtime runtime is the core of apache flink guys it is also known as the kernel of flink it is a distributed streaming data flow guys at the core it is a streaming engine on the top of which guys we have several apis and libraries available so guys in the broad categories we have data set api that is for the batch processing and data stream api for stream processing now for the specialized components we have flink ml for machine learning jelly for graph processing and table for t uh, sql processing simply submit the sql queries and process the data and guys we do have table APIs on the top of data stream as well now guys if you observe this particular ecosystem this is just a processing engine this is just a processing engine there is no storage layer so guys flink is dependent on third-party storage system let's talk about Firstly, the deployment then we'll talk about the storage as well guys flink can be deployed on local machine that is in single jvm local mode is used for uh, development and testing purpose for the cluster guys we can deploy it in the standalone mode a standalone uh, resource manager is shipped with flink apart from that guys we can deploy it on gyan as well the work for other uh, resource managers are under progress but um, usually in the industry we are using it on the top of yarn yarn is the resource management layer that was introduced in hadoop 2 it is hadoop 2's resource management layer apart from that guys we can deploy flink uh, on the cloud as well uh, like google compute engine or uh, amazon's uh, elastic compute cloud so guys this is the resource management layer what i explained here now if i talk about the storage system or storage and streaming system flink can read the data from various storage systems like local file system local fs or hdfs or s3 where we are having data in the form of files or if i talk about databases it can read the data from no sql databases like mongodb or hbase or even from the relational databases as well now guys as flink can handle streams as well it can consume live streams from rabbitmq kafka or flu let's talk about the ecosystem components in great details starting with the data set api guys data set api is the regular program that implements the transformations on data set it provides operations such as map filter join group etc guys it is used for batch processing we can uh, deploy it on local jvm or on the cluster guys this is the special case of stream processing actually guys uh, uh, the core or the runtime of flink is streaming engine so batch is a special case of streaming where we have finite data sets where we have limited data set in the streaming it, it is unlimited like continuously coming and data is processed but here we know the size that is limited it offers dedicated api with machine learning sql querying and graph processing engines 
let's proceed ahead let's talk about data set api in little more detail guys it handles data at rest what do i mean by data at rest it means data is stored somewhere it allows user to implement operations on the data sets different operations you can perform like map filter join group etc now guys let's understand the data processing for typical batch mode like we do have a data source and our data processing engine like guys this data source is having um, it's actually it is generating huge data so to process this data firstly we need to store it somewhere from where our processing engine can read so we need a data source we need a typical data store guys i am using a generalized term data store it can be an rdbms it can be hdfs it can be local fs or a no sql database so data source will write the data in this data store and from there our processing engine will read it and process it so guys it will generate the insights this is the traditional way of processing the data we are doing the same type of analytics for quite long more than a decade now let's talk about a little more interesting api that is data stream api okay guys it is a regular program that implement transformations on data stream live data stream how to visualize a data stream guys uh, like how water stream flows similar to that the data is flowing in the stream like guys this is the channel and our data is flowing and this live stream we will process so guys it provides various built-in operators for common operations such as map filter aggregate etc the final results can be returned by the sync which may write the data to n number of different destinations it can be a file it can be a socket it can be on the standard output so guys data streaming apis are available in both java as well as scala now guys again let's try to visualize how a stream looks like look at it here guys like this is like how a stream data stream looks like it is flowing i hope now guys you can visualize this data stream and with the flink we are able to process this stream in real time all right let's understand data stream in little more details guys it handles continuous live streams of data it provides operations such as filter update states windows aggregate etc guys operations can be applied on each element of the stream or window okay now let's try to visualize how a stream looks like or how our stream processing engine consumes the live stream so guys again we have got our data source that is generating the continuously huge volume of data we have got stream processing engine now guys this data source will generate the data and we will collect that data in real time and stream engine our flink engine will process that data in real time look at it guys this these data packets are flowing over the network and our engine is accepting that our engine is consuming these packets these data set and it is processing the same in real time and generating the insights it is generating the insights in real time real time means guys with a latency of like a millisecond so guys that's it for data stream apis let's proceed ahead now guys how the typical programs in data set and data stream looks like let's try to visualize it 
डेटा सेट एपीआई गाइज दिस इज यूज फॉर बैच प्रोसेसिंग लेट्स नॉट अंडरस्टैंड लेट्स नॉट गो इन टिपिकल प्रोग्राम्स इन मोर डिटेल्स इन लेटर सेशन विल डिस्कस इट इन मोर डिटेल्स लेट्स टॉक अबाउट the operators that are available like flat map this is a program by the way guys is of uh, word count that is like a hello world program where guys like we are using flat map map group by sum similarly guys in the data stream apis as well if you see flat map operation is available map operation is available Group by operation is also available, and some operation is available. So, guys, whatever operations you can see available in the data set, all are available in data stream as well. Although there are a few additional operator operators are also there like window and every that is specific to stream. Guys, what exactly I am trying to explain here is if you master any one API, you can easily work on other API. so guys that's the beauty of a unified platform let's proceed ahead to discuss table table api used for relational queries so guys actually it enables the user to run sql queries for streaming or batch analytics it can easily be embedded in flings data set and data stream apis guys it can be embedded as well it allows operations like sql like oper uh, expressions uh, instead of writing the complex program actually guys it saves you from writing the complex program instead of that you can merely submit sql query and process the data so guys it provides uh, or different relational operators such as selection aggregation join etc it supports both java as well as scala so guys overall if i summarize it it enables the users to perform ad hoc analysis it allows the user to run sql queries on the top of flink that's it for table apis let's proceed ahead jelly the graph engine on top of flink guys which provides the set of operators to create transform and modify graphs library for graph algorithms to simplify the development it also provides iterative graph algorithms which are executed leveraging mutable states so guys graph processing apis are available again both in java and scala important point guys as we know the graph apis are also graph uh, applications are also iterative in nature and here in flink it leverages flink's delta iterations to map graph processing model so guys as flink provides the native support for iterative analytics it takes the advantage of same and process the graph applications quite efficiently a graph is a represent a graph is represented by data set of vertices and data set of edges so like uh, th these are the two vertices 1 and 2 which is connected by the edge let's proceed ahead flink ml machine learning library guys machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence which comes into the picture where we can't really write we developers can't write all the logic like for example uh classification of mails into spam social promotion section like all of us are using gmail automatically some mails goes in the promotions automatically some mail goes in the spam so guys we have made the algorithm that much intelligent that it itself can take the decision machine learning languages machine learning libraries are used by data scientist 
So guys, Flink ML is the machine learning library for Flink, which provides intuitive APIs and scalable ML algorithms. It is completely written in Scala. It provides native support for iterative algorithm. It is very important point guys, since it provides native support, the application execution would be pretty efficient. Develop and test your model locally on the subset of data and use the same code to run at large cluster. The main goal is to enable developers to write machine learning pipelines quickly and efficiently. So guys, that's it for the basic of ecosystem. We discussed how exactly ecosystem looks like. Then guys, we talked about the ecosystem components from the data set API, data stream API, then table API, jelly and machine learning. Let's proceed ahead. Now, guys, how a flink architecture look like from a height of say 30,000 feet. I'm showing you this particular architecture. This fling works in master slave fashion. Master is the manager node, slaves are the worker node. Master assign the work to the slaves. Master is the centerpiece of the cluster. So guys, if user is having say some work, he will submit the same work on the master. Now, master will divide the work and submit it distributedly over the all the slaves. Now guys, slaves will come into the action and process the data. Finish the work, finish the task that is assigned by the master. So guys, in this manner, Flink process the data distributedly over a cluster. All right, let's proceed ahead. Let's talk about Flink nodes. Guys, as discussed, there are two types of nodes. One is the master node and another slave node. On master node, we have a daemon called job manager. Job manager is the daemon that runs on the master. On the other hand, guys, on slave node, we have task manager. So you can understand it like that task manager is the slave daemon and job manager is the master daemon of Flink. All right, let's proceed ahead. Features. Okay, this is a little important slide. Understand this carefully. Guys, force feature low latency. You can process the data in merely milliseconds. Quite fast, lightning fast. And guys, Flink provides very high performance. So overall, low latency and high performance. Fault tolerance. Guys, failure of hardware or machine or software or any process doesn't affect the cluster. It doesn't affect the execution of complete job. Due to failure of say a particular node, your application won't be failed. Inbuilt memory management guys flink is shipped with a memory manager so it works in the managed memory flink never go out of the memory it never gets memory out of exception lightning fast speed guys as it is uh, from the name only it is uh, known that 4g of big data because of its lightning fast speed Broad integration, guys, as discussed in the ecosystem slide, Flink can be integrated with the different resource management tools like Yarn, like Mesos. It can be used to process the data from different data stores as well, like HDFS, like S3, or NoSQL databases, or RDBMS. It can also consume the data from different streams like Kafka, like Flume. Apart from this, guys, you can connect different BI tools as well, like JesperSoft, MicroStrategy, Tableau, SAP Business Objects. So you can 
process the data and generate the reports using these bi tools at the core at the heart flink is a stream processing engine guys it is also shipped with a program optimizer users program is not executed as it is firstly it is optimized then it is executed this is very important thing guys because the optimized code runs much faster than the normal code that user has written the developer has written so guys it has both the type of optimizer cause based as well as rule based scalable flink is highly scalable guys as and when your requirement increases you can add more machines in the cluster like currently you are having a th say a 100 node cluster requirement increases add 50 more machines now 150 node cluster and uh, in this manner guys uh, say down the line 10 years the requirement is uh, quite high so you ha might have reached to a thousand node cluster rich set of operators guys again important point uh, guys flink is having tons of inbuilt operators like i gave you the name map flat map filter reduce and all actually guys it saves the developers from writing the common operation code again and again rather than that how we program in flink we simply use the operators to process the data we use these transformations to process our data so guys that's it for the features of flink let's proceed ahead to data types guys starting with the basic java types that is it can be string long integer boolean or it could be collections as well but guys more important is composite types and actually guys in the programming out of this as well we use mainly tuple tuple is most important uh, composite type data type so in next slide we'll discuss about tuple in more details but let's talk about few more names like pojo plain old java object or a custom data type so guys let's talk about tuple in more detail it is the easiest lightweight and generic way of encapsulating data in flink guys we can have different type of tuples like tuple 1 2 tuple 25 I hope from the name also you uh, you can uh, understand tuple 1 can have only one value tuple 25 can have 25 values like guys if I highlight this like I am creating a variable of tuple 2 person it is having two values one is the string and second is integer so guys what data we can store inside this person variable Gaurav that is the name and 24 that is age similarly in tuple 3 we can store three data three values to retrieve the data guys we can use a variable name that is person dot f0 variable name that is person dot f1 so guys even um, in the practical uh, we for the uh, single value like if you want to uh, have uh, process the integer only for that also usually we use tuple one rather than integer alone because guys tons of operators inbuilt transformations are available on the tuple so we need to use them let's proceed ahead Hadoop compatibility guys as discussed earlier as well it is in the harmony of Hadoop only uh, the square logo is given and uh, uh, Flink supports Hadoop out of the box it supports Hadoop data types all writables and writable comparables Hadoop input formats output formats Hadoop functions and object model guys flink can process data that is already stored in hadoop it can be deployed on hadoop cluster alongside hadoop guys it can use hadoop's resource management layer that is yarn so overall guys we can use the existing hadoop cluster to deploy flink let's proceed ahead okay again important feature little tuning required guys if we talk about Hadoop there 
we had four configuration files like core side.xml, hdfs side.xml, maprate side.xml and yarn side.xml and in each and every file we had at least 100 configuration parameters so now guys you can understand how much configuration how much tuning is required in Hadoop on the other hand guys in Flink it's like no tuning is required it doesn't require memory threshold to configure it doesn't require complicated network configs also guys no need of serializer to be configured important point programs adjust to the data automatically no need of any human intervention because guys what happens that uh, in the older systems it is dependent on the efficiency it is dependent on the expertise of the admin how much fine-tune he can uh, do the cluster he can fine-tune the cluster if he is not expert he can't fine-tune the cluster and you can't use all the cluster resources efficiently that's why guys the same problem has been resolved in the flink you know don't need to configure automatically flink is intelligent enough to adjust to the data automatically let's proceed ahead okay batch on streaming guys as discussed earlier as well batch programs are the special kind of stream program so guys let's have neck to neck discussion between both of them here on the left hand side we have batch program on the right hand side we have stream program okay in the batch guys we have high latency in the stream programs we have low latency low as low as millisecond here we have pipeline or mostly blocking exchange but here in the streaming we always have pipeline data exchange in the batch guys we have global view that is we know that this is our data this is our file we talk in terms of file but here in streaming we have streaming window overall either we can process one record or one window at a time so guys this is also called as finite stream that too limited we know the size and and guys uh, in the stream it is the infinite stream we are not aware how long we are going to get the data so our engine our application will be continuously keep running and keep accepting the data so guys that's it for batch on streaming let's proceed ahead to the data transformations guys flink is having tons of transformations available let's discuss few of them in little more details map guys map is the transformation which takes one element as the input and produces exactly one element as the output like guys input is this particular line if i highlight this line and it is returning the number of character of this particular line input is like one record and return is one record on the other hand guys if i talk about flat map it takes one element as input and produces zero one or more elements so guys if i give you one example like input is this particular line say suppose second line and uh, we are dividing the line with the space so guys it will be converted into tokens words so number of elements that will be returned is surely more than one now guys let's talk about the another operation filter operation guys filter operation is quite popular quite important guys here we don't need to actually code we use directly the inbuilt filter operation what it does evaluate a boolean expression now if the expression returns true simply retain that value else discard that value key by simply group similar keys together it partitions the data into disjoint partitions each has events of same key apart from this guys we do have tons of other transformations like union join split select etc 
let's proceed ahead let's talk about flink execution model guys this is a little important slide so guys the developer will develop the flink program for the application so the program will be firstly be parsed and optimized like uh, there will be like type extraction optimization then guys this particular optimized program will be converted into data flow graph so guys this is how a data flow graph looks like so you can understand guys these are the different nodes that represent different transformations like guys first transformation we have done is map another transformation filter then another transformation we have done is like a group by here again guys say suppose map or filter here we are joining these two data set together so you can understand this is join and finally another operation like say map so guys in this manner the data flow graph is created now guys after data flow graph job manager comes into the picture which does the task scheduling it schedules the task on the slave nodes it keeps the data flow metadata with it so that it can track the intermediate results guys it deploy the operators on the slaves that is task managers guys task managers actual worker node which processes the data which perform the work that was submitted by the job manager so guys this is how a flink program is executed end to end let's talk about the execution engine and its feature in little more details so guys the core of flink is a distributed and scalable streaming data flow engine it provides following features true streaming execute everything as a stream whether input whether like processing is a batch or real time or interactive or iterative everything will be processed as the batch as the stream sorry versatile engine allows to run existing map reduce job existing cascading job existing storm job native support for iterative execution guys it allows cyclic data flows execute the iterative algorithms natively custom memory manager guys as discussed it is shared with memory manager so you will operate on the managed memory never go out of the memory cost based optimizer guys we have got a cost based optimizer available for batch as well as stream apis so all the processing all the execution will firstly go by the optimization then only execution will start so guys that's it for execution engine and execution model let's proceed ahead so guys actually flink is developed with a unique philosophy if you have observed its core is a streaming and on the streaming it is providing batch as well on the streaming it is providing graph as well it on the streaming it is providing interactive and iterative as well let's talk about few more unique features what flink says guys bring your own storage byos bring your own storage guys it supports multiple storage system flink actually guys is file system agnostic and there was one reason as well to be uh, to design like this because guys flink is pretty late entrant in the industry flink when came into the industry already petabytes or even exabytes of data is already available stored somewhere in some storage system mostly in hdfs so guys that's why it is developed with a unique philosophy wherever your data is let it be i flink can come there and i can process your data from any data source like hdfs hbase mongodb s3 or streams from flume or kafka similarly guys another feature bring your own cluster it supports for many deployment options 
Flink is agnostic to underlying cluster infrastructure. Guys, again, the reason is same. Already big clusters are deployed in the industry. Like people are having thousand node Hadoop cluster, thousand node Spark cluster. So on the top of that, in the same cluster only install Flink. Flink will run pretty happily on the top of Hadoop. That is Yarn on the top of Mesos, Amazon Web Services and so on. So guys, overall, I can say Flink can retrieve the data, it can accept the data, it can receive the data from any data source. It can be a file data source like HDFS or file system, sockets that is from the streaming engines or NoSQL databases. And it can write the data to any of the file systems, any of the sockets or on the terminal. Apart from this input, accepting the input from anywhere and writing output to anywhere, it can be deployed in any mode, can be deployed in local mode, can be deployed on a cluster that to in a standalone or yarn or Mesos or in cloud on Google cloud or Amazon cloud. So guys, that's the flexibility that Flink provides. All right. So guys, Another philosophy that Flink provides, write once, run anywhere with any data. Like guys, the code that you have written, simply run and test your code on a small laptop with just sample data set. In the QA cluster, in your testing cluster, simply test it. And uh, if you find it, everything working fine, then deploy it on the production cluster. Now guys, uh, when the new data arrive, again test the same on the QA cluster and once everything is developed, then deploy again it on the production cluster. So guys, the same code that run on your small laptop that to on KBs of data without any change, same code can be deployed on the production cluster that to like a thousand node cluster. So guys, that's it for Apache Flink. If I summarize the discussion, guys, Flink has bring the revolution in big data industry. Now it is taking big data towards maturity. Guys, what Flink says, don't use multiple frameworks for different type of problems. Use a single unified platform, a single platform that can handle all the diverse requirements. So guys, that's why Flink is called 4G of big data. Flink is called future of big data. So guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.